Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Life Science with KMD. Today I am going to explain about Rhizopus. Okay, Rhizopus is genus under Zygomycota. They are classified by the production of zoospores during sexual reproduction. They are commonly called as black bread mold or pin mold. They belongs to the family Mucoraceae. Rhizopus is a genus of saprophytic, meaning uh, they grow on dead and decaying material or it could be plant or on a animal also. So, and parasitic fungi, that means they grow or they depend on the host for their food. Then they found in moist or dumb places. They found in organic substances like vegetables, fruits, bread and jellies, etc. The vegetative structure, now this is the vegetative structure, is made up of xenocytic, that means there is no septa. And it is multinucleated and they are branched hyphae. They have a branched hyphae. They are used to produce various chemicals and alcoholic products. Some species of rhizopus cause plant diseases and may cause infection in humans too, known as mucoromycosis. Coming to the morphology of rhizopus, they are fast-growing fungi, have a cottony appearance. The body of the rhizopus consists of a branched mycelium. The mycelium is xenocytic. That means there is no septa and composed of three types of hyphae. One is stolon. This is the stolon and this one is rhizoid and third one is the sporangiophore. The stolon is the internodal region. It is aerial, forms an anchorage and touches the substratum forming the nodal region. Whereas rhizoids are formed where the stolon touches the substratum at the nodal at the nodes. They are branched, anchor the mycelium to the substratum and absorb food. Okay, the sporangiophore are the aerial reproductive mycelium. They are branched and consists of sporangiophores at the terminally. Uh, consists of sporangiospores terminally. The cell wall is made up of chitin. The cytoplasm is multinucleated and consists of other cell organelles such as mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, vacuoles and oil droplets. Coming to the life cycle of rhizopus. Rhizopus reproduce by all the three processes that is vegetative, asexual and sexual reproduction. In case of vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation. Each fragments of the stolon is uh, developed, I mean each fragment of the stolon is developed separately making a complete mycelium. Asexual reproduction is by the formation of sporangiospores and chlamydospores. In case of uh, formation of a sporangium spores the sporangiospore are formed terminally in the sporangia of aerial mycelium called sporangiophore this is sporangiophore this is the sporangia and these are sporangiospores this is sporangiophore they are formed under favorable condition the sporangiophore develop from the upper side of the rhizoidal node the apical part swell uh, swells up forming sporangium as the nuclei and cytoplasm move epically. The cytoplasm of sporangium differentiate into dense um, into a denser peripheral region with more nuclei and central columella region with fewer nuclei and uh, more vacuoles. See this sporangiospores develop inside the sporangia. This is sporangia. These are sporangiospores. They are multinucleated and non-motile. The wall of the sporangium rupture after maturation. These sporangiospores comes out as a powdery mass. After getting a suitable condition and the substratum, each spores germinate into new mycelium. Now, another method which comes under um, asexual reproduction is the formation of 
chlamydospores. Chlamydospores are formed during unfavorable condition. First, you should remember that this uh, sporangiospores are developed uh, under favorable condition. Whereas in case of chlamydospore formation, they are produced under unfavorable condition. An intercalary segment of mycelium developed due to formation of the septa and accumulation of protoplast. In case of uh, sporangiospore, the mycelium is xenocytic. Uh, that means there is no septa. But in case of chlamydospores, the mycelium will produce a septa. Therefore, it is called as septate and um, it is thick walled. The septa is thick walled and um, detaches from the mycelium once it dries. So, since it is unfavorable condition, uh, when the septa is formed, it will be a thick walled and it detaches from the mycelium once it is dried, once it is uh, dried up. Then the rim and uh, later on that will remain dormant until the favorable condition was written and then germinate to form a new mycelium. This is how the formation of chlamydospores will takes place. It is uh, formed under the unfavorable condition and it will produce a septa in the mycelium. Then it will uh, detaches from the mycelium due to um, um, dried up and and then due to uh, unfavorable condition and it will dried up and it will remain dormant for a, a period of um, um, for a long period uh, or it will uh, remain dormant until the favorable condition returns and then germinate to form a new mycelium sexual reproduction is by the fusion of two compatible hyphae. Most of the rhizopus species, especially the rhizopus stolonifer, are heterothallic. That means having different mycelium for positive, this is the positive and uh, negative mating strain. Compatible hyphae come together in both the mycelium a small outgrowth. Here you can see the outgrowth. Uh, develops it is known as progametangia the nuclei and the cytoplasm move towards the apical region and progametangia make in contact the apical region um, the apical region is separated from the rest of the hyphae by septate uh, by septa formation this is called as gametangia the gametangia conjugate to form a multinucleated structure the plasmogamy is followed by karyogamy. The diploid zygote is formed. It is known as zygospore. Rest of the unpaired nuclei degenerate. The zygospore enlarge and become thick walled and resistance to the adverse environmental condition. On getting favorable condition, zygospore germinate in the inner wall of zygospore develop into promycelium forming germ sporangiospore with germ sporangium formed epically the meiosis sucker and haploid microspores are formed they come out after rupture of the germ sporangium wall and develop into a new mycelium Thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on subscription button. Subscription doesn't cost you any money. To get a notification, click on a bell icon. Do like and share this video with friends and family. If you have any kind of feedback, do share it on a comment box. Thank you.